But the first one is Elden Ring. I don't know if you've seen the, the trailer yet, Mr. Black. Uh, I have not, no. Okay, so we'll just pull that bad boy up here. You let me know when you're ready to go. All right, I'm ready when you are. And we're going to we're gonna chickety-check this out. And then over here to the trailers tab. All right, three, two, one, go. Peggy 16. Peggy 16. Peggy 16. So right off the rip, the first thing I thought of is, holy shit, are we getting a Dark Souls game with a horse? Are we going to go horse riding? Will soon return. Guided by grace. Once lost. The Golden Order is broken to its core. And the answer is yes. You are totally going to be on a horse. And apparently doing combat on a horse. In search of the Elden Ring. Emboldened by the flame. As always, the art team for these games from FromSoft are fucking nuts. All these enemy designs and stuff are crazy. That dragon just catch a bolt of, uh, of lightning? Oh, get fucked. Well, a lowly tarnished, playing as a lord. I command thee. Some of these enemies or bosses are fucking huge in this one, eh? And that one is set for a January 2022 release. I think it's January 21st. We mm, one day before my birthday. Anyway. This oh yeah, that's very true. I didn't even think about that. That's very true. An early birthday present. Mm. Um that looks real it look it look first of all, it looks like it's on the same engine as Dark Souls 3. It looks better than Dark Souls 3, but it's obviously a uh, or maybe it's, well, it seems obvious, but it looks like a derivative of Dark Souls 3's uh, engine. Uh, mm. But that's never held, you know, that's never held back those games because the art team carries the fuck uh, out of the games, even if they're not like the most high fidelity graphically. Um, the enemy designs and whatnot are all just insane. The armor work and, and uh, detail and, and everything is uh, is very impressive. I, um... Uh... I have other bits, I guess, from that. So it is things that we got confirmed in in after the show, in interviews and stuff, uh, were that it is actually more properly open world. There's a hub, but it's more properly open world than it was before. I suspect that's why we're getting a horse for you know traversing said world faster. Uh, that trailer does seem to hint that there is going to be horse combat. I don't know if I've, if we've gotten direct confirmation that's the case, but it certainly seems like it based on that. Uh, on that trailer, and that would make sense, honestly, if you're gonna uh, give somebody a horse in Dark Souls, why not allow them to, uh, to, to use it for combat? And, uh, 
And you can play with, I believe it's up to three other people, so I think four of you can go around, or you can play it solo. Uh, so it's a, 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 a very... It's not a huge departure, but in, in many ways, it's a, a, a fairly big step forward for the, for, you know, I keep calling it Dark Souls. It, it isn't Dark Souls, but much like Bloodborne isn't Dark Souls, it's still basically fucking Dark, dark Souls with a different yeah. flavor. Uh, this yeah. definitely looks more Dark Souls-y than Bloodborne was. Uh, the pace of combat looked like it was more in line with Dark Souls. So, yeah, uh, I'm sure that thing is going to be fucking huge. Uh, some of the enemies, speaking of huge, some of the enemies are fucking enormous in that trailer. It looked like, in parts, it looked almost like Shadow of the Colossus, reminiscent of Shadow of the Colossus. These screen-filling uh, bosses that are that are definitely not really something that you're used to in the Dark Souls franchise. There were large bosses, but there weren't, weren't that many that, were, that seemed like they were legit giants. Not even Yorm was... A, that big so yeah i don't know i'm i'm kind of looking forward to it i i'm i'm always i like the games but you never look forward to the rage they're going to they're going to fill you with <laughs> when you when you play the games like because when you first play them you it's kind of like the honeymoon phase where you don't care that you're dying and then after you know six seven hours have passed and you're you're past the honeymoon phase and you died at that same place like 15 times uh, you start throwing controllers around the room and, and screaming and, uh, and yelling obscenities. Uh, mm. Does that look like a game you might dip your toes into in the water on the stream or something? It's always a, a popular stream game, uh, Dark Souls. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a genre of game I like. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, for that reason, I think it looks, it looks good. Um, yeah, I I don't know how, I don't know how much more I can add to that. It doesn't look like a bad game. It, it looks like Dark Souls. It looks like what you want from a Dark Souls um, it, game. Yeah, it literally <laughs> looks like what you want, right? It's the same thing where it's like if you're a Call of Duty fan, Call of Duty comes out with another game. It usually looks like Call of Duty, so the fans get excited about the new Call of Duty and excited about Elden Ring. Um, the thing that would make me like really really on board with this is if they actually find a way to tell a story like a legit story and not hide it in like, item descriptions yeah like and just feel like you're on a journey with a character outside of playing like a weird dungeons and dragons thing where you know you just kind of the the atmosphere and the cool design of enemies is the thing that does the visual storytelling i i i I like a good story. I'm just a sucker for it. Um, the good news is, is you don't necessarily need one for these types of games because people play these games for the challenge, not necessarily the story. If they, if they were in it for the story, the, this game wouldn't be successful. None of the none of these games would be successful. I'm not saying there isn't a story digged in there somewhere, um, and I'm sure the diehards w are probably you know smacking their head on the keyboard and saying, "Oh, there's this big and rich story that like." Well, I think blah, everyone. Blah, blah, blah. I think even the diehards understand that. It's not Dark Souls' primary function to deliver its story directly. It's like it's like imagine, always background. Imagine if they could tell a story <clears throat> on um, top that, of what they do. <laughs> on top of what they do, you know what I mean? Like the it, it would it would be it would be incredible. I mean, if you had if you I'm not talking about like Naughty Dog level storytelling, um, but I'm 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 saying like I mean, this decent, is being penned by George R. R. Martin. Well, then there you go. So, like, yeah. So, maybe I am looking for a Naughty Dog type <laughs> story. You know, one that, like, you know, sucks you in and gets you invested. You know, what? how cool would it be to have story about each boss you're going to fight? And as you're going through the area, you read things. You hear things about this, about the boss. You learn about why it has so many heads on it and why why it, it had, like, the meaning of the sword that it holds and how it got it. Like, if you could go through each section of the game and each boss and then and then kind of feel like what you're getting into, you, you hear these stories. I, I think it would add a lot more weight uh, to not only the boss fights, but it would just feel you'd feel more accomplished when you beat them as well. Like you'd be like, damn, you know, this is the guy that was responsible for killing 
uh, 100,000 people in this big ass town or village and and all their souls are inside them and fucking, you know, it's given all their power like a Dragon Ball Z thing or whatever. I don't fucking know, right? I'm not a storyteller. Well, but That's not particularly cool. far off of at least three or four of the bosses. Yeah. See, it would be cool. It would be it would be very very cool to yeah. To I, actually... I I agree. I th I I and you know, Dark Souls three got closer to that than than one and and two did, where one was basically there is loosely some lore here, but you have to have every item in the game, and then you write down the description of every item in the game, and then you you play the worst game of ad lib, uh, ever. And try and string them all together to loosely form the narrative of various characters and places and bosses and, and whatnot. So it was there, you just had to basically fucking spend as much time piecing it together yourself uh, mm -hmm. as, you, as you did finding the stuff to even piece together to begin with. And some people, in fairness, really like that. I, I, th I guess maybe it gives even more mystique... To the world and and what's around you and and you're not you just don't know everything up front but i do think that there is a, a middle ground that i would like to see where they at least give you at least put things in front of you that, that you don't have to go out of your way to get the gist of it let me at least get the gist of it and if i want more than that then sure hide some shit in some fucking places or whatever, but give me like the the gist of it, and don't just make it like cryptic fucking monologues by uh, soft spoken lady next to a bonfire uh, to to try and piece it together. So uh, well, anyway, yeah, it looks good. Looks it good. looks good, and it's a looks big good. open world. That's the thing I'm interested in most is that it's an, they're saying it's a major a big open world uh, experience. That's a major departure from what they currently have been doing. So we'll see. Uh, apparently, well, we'll see more probably before it comes out, but otherwise. January 2022.